Uh, like, how do you how do you seriously not start off the show and just uh, talk <laughs> number thirty four? Yeah, and how again on Saturday night it was shaping up, not whether or not he'll score, but how many will he finish off, and. Uh, Two goals in a blink of an eye, and you're sitting there going, could this be one of those uh, three, four, five-goal nights? Yeah, it just felt like a, a glitch in the game. Like, it was like, is he playing on rookie mode? Is the other team participating? It, it's really, and I said this to my wife at the time, I don't remember, and maybe this is like an of-my-age thing, I don't remember watching hockey and feeling like it was that unfair for one or two guys, Matthews and Marner. It just felt like the other team beating themselves the way that like Tiger Woods opposition used to beat him. It just felt so inevitable and lopsided that they were just going to score. Sammy. Yeah. It's just an inevitability at this point for Matthews. I, I've never seen anything like it. Um, the second goal was so filthy, just cuts into the middle, shoots it in the first, the sec, uh, the first one's just his going to the net, finding a goal in front. It's just, he scores in every different way. Like there's just no way he, you know, it just used to be the wrister from the top of the circle. There wasn't much else that he would use to do. He's developed year after year now, and he's just finding a way to score goals at a rate unlike anyone has scored goals in like 10 years in the NHL. It's unbelievable. Well, let's pick up this conversation after, after we hear from our first Kippers Clippers of the week with Sheldon yeah. Keefe on Matthews. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's a moment there, especially the second one goes in. Uh, Spez turned around and kind of, Gave me the uh, the eyes like it's something special, and then, no doubt, uh, yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, he, he, he I, I'm surprised he stopped it too. To be honest, with the way that he was playing, and like you, you felt like he was gonna have a serious night, um, but you know, it didn't go in for him the rest of the way. But he was uh, he was great tonight. You know, for him to come, you know, he's established the, the record and come back home here, but he's clearly not uh, satisfied. So he's continuing to to push himself and our team. And I think Sheldon spoke of this uh, at the end of the last week. The whole key out of this is that it's it's not a... F doesn't feel like it's overly forced. We had said two mm. weeks ago that there were moments when you see it kind of forced. Right. But now it's not, and they're having team success. So just enjoy the ride. Yeah. No, it doesn't feel like it's taken over. Well, first off, if it's like driving Matthews, this gold chase, to play the way he's playing, well, great. You know, I, I don't think they'd have any problem with that. Just he's been so good. I just I think it speaks to how special it is that a guy like Jason Spezza would turn around and look at Keith, two guys who know the game and have been around and give it the like, you seeing this? I th maybe it was uh he looks tired maybe i should sit in for a few shifts Spence on him. Is going a hey, he's giving him time to sit him down for a <laughs> actually i don't i don't know what his ice time was on uh saturday but he has been playing a ton they've been rolling him out there 24 minutes and i'm glad you brought that up because every game i watch the least now and i don't know if it's just his dominance of or he's actually playing a lot more but it just feels like he's out there every other shift like he's just his impact on the game there can't be more guys in the league that impact the game he does the way he does right now in all facets. Like, he just feels like he is everywhere. Yeah. Defensive zone, neutral zone, offensive zone. It, I don't know how he's in three places at once, but it just feels like he is. I mean, the way Matthews and Marner get pucks back, I know Bunting is on the line too, but the way they get pucks back, it's just yeah. teams just seem to like be throwing it away before they can take it away. It's just they spend the whole game in the zone. Yeah, he was 21 minutes the other night, but yeah, it's... It is really unbelievable. My question, I guess, is he's at 58. Well, they have 10 games left. You know, what is the expectation here? Like, do you think? I got to think that he'll continue to get these looks. And I, I, I'd i say probably if, if he snake bit one, two games, he still should be able to finish with another six goals. Yeah. Uh, you know, is in 10 games Ovi's career high in a season is 65 which is interesting that that's mm -hmm. feels like it's in play i just hope that there's not some chase at the end of the season where it's like should we rest him healthy him play him 16 minutes and it's like no no no, we need to push him through so he can play for some individual yeah. you know till oh. he gets hurt the last game and we're <laughs> screaming at him uh but i i 
I, I don't believe in that. What would be the I, next? I believe if he's if he's feeling really well, yeah, and he's and it's and it, there seems to be a a, a, a uh, a rhythm to what's going on. Uh, wants to play, play. Doesn't yeah. want to play, don't play. It's it's that simple. Don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze it. And uh, enjoy it. Yeah. Well, he's at, he's going to get to 60, right? Yes. So that's the next big milestone. But then after that, what is it? I, I guess Ovi's single 65? season for yeah. me is the yeah. only thing. And, I mean, there's guys that have scored more than 65. So I think once right. you get to 60, it's kind of... I the, think the not, 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 not that you're gonna rest them or whatever, but I think you can be like, hey, Austin, you're maybe gonna give you a night off at some point towards the end of the if they're solidified in their spot, they're not mm -hmm. insulting him. Austin, uh, going back a year uh, to April 9th of 2021, Austin Matthews has scored 71 times uh, over just one 365 day span. Um, second to that time is Leon Dreisaitl, 59, so a dozen goals less. And then seven behind him is Kaprizov, Kreider, and McDavid. So, I mean, we're talking about, it's not like, is it Ovi or is it, who's the best goal scorer in the league now? It's Matthews. And uh, it, th there is a sense in, uh, you know, my my stance on, on Matthews as a centerman. And the thing that I've liked the most about this recent torrid pace to mm -hmm. me is that he is now looking more like a, a centerman than an Ovechkin winger, a Stamkos, you know, winger when he was scoring all those goals. I love the fact that he is now, I think, in my opinion, looking a lot more dangerous to pass the puck. He's than passing shoot a ton. The puck. Well, there was a two-on-one where he tried to right? set up Mikheyev or yep. something, and, and he, I was like, what? And he's still going. To me, that's he looks more like a centerman than he ever has yeah. before. Yeah, and there's no doubt he's not. I also Just hogging the puck or something. I, I also got to think that part of the reason why he's even that much more dangerous in, in the last weeks, if not months, is the fact that Marner has stepped up as a goal scorer. Yeah. That this is no longer a guy that's looking at 20 or 19 goals or 21. This is now a legitimate 30, 35 goal scorer, which again makes other defenders. You can't just cheat off him. Can't cheat off of him now. Yeah. It's an awesome point. Yeah. yeah. Man, think of that. And Marner is now. As long as they're going to play together, if they're both a threat to go out there, and again, Marner now is a threat to score from 30 or 40 feet out, mm -hmm. that changes the dynamics of the looks and and the feel of just overcompensating on Matthews. He's opened himself up for one-timers. I don't remember ever seeing Marner do that in the past.